everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This kickstarts this year's Creative Card Series 2019. So for those of you that have been with me for a while now will know that this basically just means that I'm now going to be making loads of cards. So the series is just really focusing on fun fold cards, unusual cards, pop-up cards, cards with a difference and that's kind of what I do a lot anyway but I also like to just kind of combine really fun cards within a kind of small window so this is probably going to be I'm thinking maybe within the week back to back but it might go over two weeks so anyway you just know now know that every tutorial I bring out is going to be a card for possibly two weeks so this is the third year now so I will link in the other 2018 and 2017 series because there's some really fun cards in there and um, lots of inspiration so this first one is a pop-up box card so you would have seen these lots of these I've already made the envelope and everything but this this is a bigger size and this is a six by two so when it folds flat it will go in an eight by six and a half envelope which is on the envelope punch board okay so that's my envelope already there but how gorgeous is this and then on the back here, you have your space to write your message. But look at all that lovely colour. I just love how these fold completely flat. So you can obviously post them easily, but isn't that lovely? So I have made box cards before, but I haven't made one this big. In terms of the length, I've gone higher. I've done some tiny little ones, and I love this little planter style, which I've done before. And again, look into that playlist there, because you'll see others for more inspiration. But it stands up perfectly. It's got such a pretty profile, and I love making these. Now, the inspiration to do these has come from, so this is the pop-up box kit, and this is from Papercraft Essentials issue 176. So this is currently July 2019 issue, okay? And the inspiration on the front there using it is this pop-up box card, and I thought, hmm, I really like it and let's see how I can adapt it. And here's my version. So, the kit's brilliant. I will link the magazine below and inside here you get so much stuff. So, let me just get all this out here. I've got some bits that I've already obviously been using, so I'll probably use them in the one that I'm gonna do now. You get all of these little foam squares, little adhesive pads there, and then inside, here we go, is a template. So if you want to have, you know, that tall box card that's on the front, here's the template to make it. So you just draw through these, draw around it, and then cut it all out. So that's handy to keep to one side. But I've done this one myself. So what you get in the kit is papers at the back, which are all double-sided, beautiful designs. You can see there, and on the back, you get polka dots. And, uh, is that the other one there? Oh, you've got that one there as well with the little... Uh, watering can. So there's loads of papers but then the best bit is all these lovely pop outs so you get all these different flowers and sprigs and they're all on really thick, it's about a 300 GSM card and they're all different, I think there's a few duplicates. Look at this one here with the plant pot, yeah so you must get two of each because there's two of that one and then I've already used one of the big um, flower here fact it was mainly that one no it wasn't yeah it was I used a lot of from that one you got these here I've used that one in that then you get your sentiment toppers so I use the birthday one so I might use this one here on your birthday for this next one and that's ones that I've already started using look how much you get you get so much so it's well worth it and I think that magazine is only let me just have a quick look seven nine no uh, six ninety nine so you can make a lot of cards with this Okay, so I'll leave that one there. This is what you're going to need today. So for the sentiment on the back, I've used the Happy Birthday, and that's from the Occasions stamp set by Dovecraft. But you also have General, which is this one here. Or was it the other way around? No, I think that's the right way. <laughs> These are a bargain. They're £2 each on Amazon. So again, I will link them below because I've already been using them loads. So <laughs> you're going to see them feature probably all the time. This is how you make the card lots of strips of cardstock so it's a perfect one to use any scraps that you might have you don't have to cut into any of your main card for this one so you need let me just pop them to one side because there are inside pieces so the main strips for the front and back okay so everything is half an inch apart from those which i'll talk you through in a minute so these are half an inch by six and you want eight pieces so it's going to be four on the front and four on the back and then these here again half an inch 
and you want eight of them and they're all two inches long. Okay, so half an inch by two and you need eight of them, half an inch by six and you need eight of them. Then these are seven by half an inch and you want two and these are going to be our kind of pieces in the middle to be able to stick all of our pop-ups onto and you just want to score along the seven inch side, you want to score at half an inch and six and a half. On both pieces fold and that will give you these little tabs and that's how we will attach it to our pop-up box. Then to create the four hinges on each corner you want four pieces that are one inch by three and a quarter. I think it's just nice to have this like little bit where it kind of like overhangs so that's why I've done the three and a quarter so again you want four of them and then along the one inch side you just want to score a half an inch and just fold all of those. Okay then this piece here for the back to write my message on my pattern paper is two and a half by four and a half and the white in the middle is two by four and I've just stamped that now so that's all ready. So first of all you want to grab one of your hinges okay and leave those bits to one side and first of all we're going to be working with the longer pieces all right so you're going to use four of these first of all and all you want to do is dab some glue in kind of four places so just equally spaced I've got four blobs of glue there. If you've got a glue that dries clear and not sticky or tacky that's what you want so it doesn't matter if you go over the edges because you're not going to see any of this. Alternatively you can put the glue on here if you want but I find it easier to put it on the hinge and then you want to stick them. If you use your grid to keep everything lined up so I'm just going to follow this line here and I've come down by about uh, about a quarter just under a quarter of an inch then the next one entirely up to you how you want to space these but just make sure that the key is to keep it all straight and then that one so it doesn't matter what the gap is doesn't matter if one's bigger than the other and then the bottom so again I'm leaving the same kind of gap as I have at the top and just stick them all down like so then I'm going to add glue now to the other side so flip it over and just add some glue to each of those Grab another hinge, flip it back over again and pop it all in, making sure it's all lined up. So I'm using this bottom line in this corner here for that, hold that there and then I can make sure this is still lined up there and just push them all down keeping everything nice and straight. That's the hardest part of doing this, keeping it all straight and make sure it's butted up to the score line, the fold there. You can kind of fold that over as well if you want just to add some more pressure. Okay, so now we've already created the front or the back. Then you want to grab four of the smaller pieces, okay, pop it on its side and again just, you can follow now where you've stuck the ones before as to where you need to put the glue. So again, see there I've just put three blobs and now you're going to do the same but with the shorter pieces. But this time all you've got to do now is line it up with this here or as close as you can again butting it up to the score line so I just kind of tack them all in place and then I can kind of wiggle them around a little bit so line it all up again like so okay you can fold that over there and again when you fold them over can you see they run perfectly over the ones there maybe that one can be moved a bit but that's what you want to kind of aim for. Then flip it over and I'm going to add the glue to the outer sides of these pieces. Okay, then grab another hinge and this time pop it on there. Again, keeping everything all lined up because you don't want to have a wonky pop-up card. You know when you go to a restaurant and your table wobbles You've got to put some tissue under one of the legs. That's what could happen with this if you don't get all these straight. Okay, and then again, I'm going to grab those other four small ones and just stick them all in. Again, I'm lining it up. Okay, and then flip that one over. And then pop the last hinge on. 
Okay, so that's where you need to be now. So at the moment it kind of looks like a bit of a farmyard kind of gate or something. Next you want these pieces where you scored. So these are our little kind of pieces that are going to hold all the pop-ups that are going to go inside. So it doesn't at this point it doesn't matter if this is the front or the back because they look exactly the same. But you want to open this out slightly, okay? You're going to add some glue onto one of the tabs here on any one. Actually, before you do that, what you might want to also do is just take a little wedge off of these so you're creating a tab because otherwise some of it may overhang and you don't want this to be seen. You see that I've just taken a little bit off just to kind of, yeah, just make it a little bit smaller. And then, so actually I'm going to have this as my front, okay, so these four pieces here will be the front once we put that on. So you want to come down to the second one and you want to kind of line up the fold here, this folded bit, with this outer part of this hinge here. So there's that piece there and I'm going to stick it on the second one but line it up with that hinge there, okay. Just stick that in place for a second. Whilst that one's kind of drying, keeping everything straight, let's have it hang that way, there we go. I'm just going to take these little wedges off here. So this one, this end here is going to come to the end here. So the fold should kind of roughly line up with the hinge here. I'm just going to fold that over. Okay, so you can see there you've got the two stuck together. If I bring it up, can you see? So this fold is lined up with the outer part of this hinge here. And then this one I've stuck so it's almost there, but the hinge kind of lines up with this one. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but that's roughly where I've lined mine up. So if I bring this across, you can see how they're going to sit. Okay. Then what you want to do is fold them down so now they are lying across, now they're lying on top of each other. Add some glue to the tops of each of those tabs. Make sure you don't get glue on anywhere else, you just want to get the glue on the two tabs. Okay, like so. And then this one, as long as it's lined up with the panel that's underneath them both, you just fold that right down across it should all hide behind that one there and just put some pressure on that for a minute and already you know that your card is going to lie flat because that is the that is the way it's going to be so it's completely flat even by the time we put them on it will still lie nice and flat so now when I bring that over you've got your pieces inside to be able to stick everything to so it's a really easy way to do it and to make sure everything lines up so you might find now when you go to fold it that way flat, it won't quite go because we stuck it in that formation. So that is now the way that this will always fold flat. So that could be the front now if I wanted to. And that, that's how it would be in the envelope, okay? So I'm gonna turn it back over. And then if you just lift up these pieces here, and then again, I'm just gonna add blobs of glue in line with these, because I know that's where these next pieces are going to go. So I'm going to bring it out like this and keep everything nice and flat and just stick them up to the score line. Again using my grid here to make sure everything stays nice and straight and just lie those four down. Okay fold all of that in and then you can just add some glue onto the tops of those four, fold that hinge kind of in and just kind of tack them all in place and if you fold it all flat and you can line them all up with the ones underneath and can you see everything should line up with each other. So spend some time in it, obviously you know I've done a lot of these now so I can do it pretty quickly but it, it isn't hard, you know, it's not hard to do and it shouldn't take too long as long as you just follow that way. And there you have your little pop-up. Now if you wanted to stick them up higher here, you can. 
I like to stick them one down a bit just so you don't really see it. Look, looking through there, you wouldn't know that they're in there. Okay, but if you want to have them right up here, but we can stick on here as well. So they're in there, they're stuck down on this second one here. But I've also stuck pieces, you know, behind and in front here as well. Okay. So that is the box, that's it. Everything now is up to you how you want to decorate it. But a little tip on how to make sure you want to keep it all within that envelope. Okay, so I've just pulled all these pieces out. Now you don't have to have this kit to make this card. You can use any, you know, die cuts. You can use any other kind of pre-die cuts that you might have. Anything you want. Stamped images, it's entirely up to you. So now what I would say is get the first one down and one of the largest ones down first at the highest height because from there you know that, that you can't go any higher than that so everything else will kind of work its way around so I think I'm going to go for probably this one in the middle so I'm going to lie that down in the way you'll know because one way it won't really want to go this is the way that it wants to fold flat so when I lay this down here it will come slightly over 8 inches which is fine Okay. Each of these squares is an inch, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So here is my highest point. I don't want to go any higher than that, otherwise it's not going to fit in my envelope. And you also don't want to go over, you know, the eight and a bit there and this line here, because again, it won't fit in the envelope. So I know that I can stick that one there. So that's going to be my highest point. So I'm going to bring in some acetate here. I've got a strong acetate. I think this was just left over from some packaging. And I'm just cutting random strips. They're about half an inch. And then I'm just going to half that again. So I've got about half an inch by about two and a half inches. And I'm going to use my red tape for all of this because it sticks well to the acetate and obviously to the, the paper as well. But I'm just going to run a little strip along the top of the acetate there. So this is the same way that I've done all of these kind of boxes. I like to use the acetate because it looks like they're floating but if you don't have acetate just use you know white card it's fine because you're actually adding so much stuff there you can't actually really see if there was white kind of you know pieces like this rather than acetate so but some of the ones I've done you can they really look like they're floating. So I'm just going to lift this one back up and I'm just going to stick that behind it. Like so. Then I'm going to add, no, then I'm going to pop it in, bearing in mind I know it's going to come down to this second section here. So when I sit that in there, that is going to fit perfectly. So I'm just going to run some sticky tapes. What you don't want it doing is sticking out, but you can easily cut it away even once you've stuck it down because you can pop your scissors in from the side here and you can cut it away or you can go in from the top, it's up to you. But if I just bring this back down, so it's all lined up. You only need to do this for the first one and maybe check it every now and then. One, two, three. So now I'm gonna stick this, bearing in mind you're working within this section in terms of your display. Because you can see everything is within that six inch section here. This is just your side piece, so you don't wanna don't look at this whole piece and think halfway is like here. You want to just look within this six inch section here. So I'm going to pop this in and I can see where the second one is because I want to make sure I stick it in between and I'm going to have it just there. So now when I bring it up, it pops up and I've stuck it on the first one. Okay. So that's my highest point. So now if I add this yellow one, I know I can stick it just there on the second one but I know that's as high as I need to go so again I'm going to cut another piece of my acetate in fact I've got a piece here and I know this is roughly the same kind of height so I'm going to again add some double sided tape and popped it on the bottom one there and then I'm going to stick it on that back one like so so there's two in place now then I like to put some on the front, even at this early stage, because it starts to fill in kind of gaps and helps you then place other pieces. So, for example, this one here, I actually think I'm going to have crawling up the side there from the wall. So that one's from the ground. So that one's really easy to just stick straight down, like so. 
and then I'm going to have, I think, maybe this one here, like so. I'm going to have maybe that yellow one there, actually. And then I can add like a little leaf behind it. I love doing these. I just love building up these little scenes. And I'll cut a few other pieces in a minute. So you see what I mean already now that's starting to fill like kind of this gap here. Okay, so that's what you want to do. So I'm going to now add, I think, this pink one here just to kind of balance out there and then I'll put another largest one there. Okay, so that's those four. So now when you fold it flat, you can see where you've got space to be able to have things like flourishes, like leaves. So I could have, you know, a leaf coming out here but again, you don't want it to go any further than this line here because it won't go in your envelope. And I'm not going to stick them like that, but I could have something like that. And then when it op opens up, do you get what I'm trying to say? So every now and then just lie it down flat and make sure you're all within that area because you don't want to do all that hard work and then find you, well, you can't make an envelope and you've got to buy like a big white one or something. So I'm now just going to carry on decorating it with your message here this piece will just stick on the back there so all I'd done was ran a bead of glue along the outside and then just rough ones there because you can kind of see where it sits and then just make sure you get it in the center okay so I'm going to carry on decorating this I've also got my Happy birthday. I don't think I'm going to use that one. I'm going to pick another one. Okay, so there is my finished card. I absolutely adore it. I think it looks so cute. I put this one here, send in special birthday wishes. And you can see there, I've got a little butterfly in the back. I've added these, all these little extras. Yeah, looks really cute. So all folds flat. You can see nothing is overhanging. I think my butterfly, I may have to, like, I don't know. I should be able to peel it off because it's on like a glossy paper, but I might have to move him, but for the minute. Okay, so you want a piece of 11 and a half by 11 and a half. This is the paper from the Secret Garden collection. And for the six by eight and a half, it's the, the last one card size, six by eight and a half, that's what this will be. So it's 11 and a half by 11 and a half paper size, so it's saying your first score line needs to be four and seven eighths of an inch. So I'm just lining that up with the four and seven eighths, punching and scoring. If you haven't used an envelope punch board, I will link in a tutorial now where I use it, and then that one there. And then you just need to line up these lines. Now, obviously, this is the largest size, so it goes doesn't go all the way I can't score all the way there, so I'm just kind of eyeballing this, but it works. You can fold it first if you want, but I'm being lazy. But you want to line up this here with this score line, and then you know it's all okay. There we go. And then just fold and burnish all of your score lines. I want to make sure I've got it up the right way because I've got it upside down on the other one, but it's not the end of the world. And then on your bottom, you want to, of the inside flaps, you just want to add some tape. So I've just got some double-sided thin tape here. And I'm also, while I've got it, going to run two strips here. You can buy the envelope glue where you run a thin amount along here and then if you sell your cards whoever you give it to or if they buy it from you they can then once it dries you can lick it and it will seal it so it gives it a professional finish but I'm quite happy to use the double sided tape but the that glue is out there if you want it so then I'm going to just fold that up and then see how this works inside oh. I'm going to have to just trim, I didn't think about this one here, there's me saying make sure you keep testing it 
I'm going to try and just take, otherwise I'm just going to have to move it in a little bit. I don't, it's only catching ever so slightly because the envelopes, although they say that size, they're always, again, slightly bigger. So you do have a little bit of extra. Yeah, that's fine. I can get it in now. I didn't want to have to move it. I'm going to just make sure you don't catch it on anything as it goes in. I'm just being a bit careful here. Oh, no, I think I'm okay. Yeah, I can just get away with that. So now I can fold that over. Yeah, it fits in fine. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to play around. I might shift that across just a little bit, um, just in case I do end up, someone ends up buying this one from me. Probably won't. I'll probably end up actually giving these to someone. It does come out all right, but I think I might just shift it just across a little bit. But no, it's turned out really nice. So that's that one. And there's the other one. Two, I think, absolutely stunning pop-up cards. Love these so much. So I hope you like the first card for this year's Creative Card Series 2019. I have some really fun cards to share with you. I can't wait for it and I can't wait to see your versions of them once you start making them as well. So hope you've enjoyed today. Please give me a thumbs up. Check the description box below for all of links and things like that to the products that I've used and I'll be back again very soon with another card tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.